Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I'm going to talk about The Opportunist by Taryn Fisher. I'm gonna give you guys a non-spoiler section first. Our protagonist Olivia's ex-boyfriend Caleb has just lost his memory. And so with the opportunity of a clean slate, Olivia decides to take advantage of Caleb. Conveniently, Caleb doesn't remember who she is and therefore doesn't remember why they didn't work out and what she did that was so terrible. But because that, as complicated as it is, cannot be that simple, Caleb isn't exactly available. He is dating Leah Smith, and Olivia must decide how far she's willing to go and how many lies she's willing to tell to get Caleb back. And all the while, Leah is fighting to keep him. Taryn Fisher's writing style knocked me on my ass. The way that she described things just... It was just brilliant, and I'm going to read you two examples. His name rolls around my head like a barbed ball, slicing open feelings that have long since become scar tissue. He was like a jalapeno, bright and smooth, but dangerously hot. Let me tell you now, I don't think I've ever yelled at a book as much as I did at this one, and it was for good reasons and bad reasons, and no, don't do that character reasons. It's kind of like when they go into a basement and you're like, no, you're gonna die, it was those sort of things because I had the benefit of knowing the present. And I was like, no past, Olivia, don't do that. <laughs> there are so many fun parts. I laughed so much in this. You're just really in for a roller coaster of emotions with this series. So I want you guys to come back when you have read this because I'm gonna delve into the spoilers now. It is so witty and the descriptions are just brilliant and I loved this book to pieces. Caleb's favorite book is Great Expectations and I think that says a lot about his character. When Caleb called Olivia Duchess in present tense, and this was before I found out that he faked the amnesia thing, it really rang this bell with me, this interesting conversation that I had with my friend Megan about if you lost your memory, are you still you? If you were to be put in those same situations, would you make those same choices? And up until the point of Caleb admitting that he had faked the amnesia, I thought that was just a really interesting thought that fit quite ironically in this book because I hadn't even picked the book up or really read much of a summary on it at that point. And I'm just like, okay, that fits perfect. And going right on the Caleb faking the amnesia train here, now going back and rereading certain parts, realizing that Caleb had never lost his memory and that he remembered everything that was going on and understood it in the full capacity of the moment, like when he got her favorite flower unintentionally and he's just like, lucky guess. And when he toyed around with the ceramic owl that she had on her shelf that he gave her. Oh man, and then when Caleb asked her what her favorite memory was, and she told him that it was this super extraordinary date that she had with this guy and about all the clues, and it's just like, he remembered everything. There's this little flashback about the paint blob on her ceiling. Four years ago, Caleb helped me move in. We painted together, my living room tan and my bedroom lilac. Knowing my penchant for perfection, he dabbed his roller on the ceiling above my bed to annoy me. He left a purple stain. I was furious. There, now you'll have to think of me every night before you close your eyes, he had said. After we broke up, I was grateful for that blob of paint. It was the last thing I saw before I went to sleep and the first thing I saw when I woke up. I really love those little things. I think my favorite scene out of all three books so far, and I'm about a quarter of the way through Thief right now, is the cake fight scene. I loved it to pieces. I read it like three times. I just think it's so wonderfully put and so playful and airy, and it was really fun to read. The reason that Olivia is willing to fight so hard and so dirty to get Caleb back is because she has never needed anybody until she met him and that means a lot for, some, for someone like her to admit that who is so fiercely independent. The penny. Seriously? Yeah. Any scene that penny involved, you turn me to mush. When they were in the pool and the penny was at the bottom and then they kissed and he pulled away and she took it the wrong way and then she just wanted nothing to do with him and it all just went so downhill. But then after that, Olivia just was like, I'm not interested and he left her alone for five months. If there was one little part that could just describe Olivia to a T was this. I was a relationship retard. I kicked, shoved and punched people out of my life so they never had a chance to hurt me. But the thing is, during those five months that he was gone, she did think about him and she said, he was like an itch that never went away. I thought of him when I looked at the trees, buildings, and when I was in the checkout light at Target choosing gum. She's just not gonna do this dating thing because she's so hung up on him and she's just gonna take up, you know, professional stalking instead. And so in the professional stalking act that she has going on, she befriends Caleb's current girlfriend, Jessica Alexander. And so then one day Olivia finds Jessica crying and Jessica tells her that she's pregnant and no, 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 because Olivia knows that Caleb wants a family and he wants kids and she knows that 
if Jessica keeps the baby and tells him about it, that he will so step up to the plate and he will definitely take care of the baby and he'll probably end up marrying her. And so she thinks in the long run of things, I'm never going to be able to be with him if she keeps the baby. And so she encourages her to get an abortion. And not only does she just encourage her, she drives her there. But Olivia has more up her sleeve. She tells her friend Camu, who has diarrhea of the mouth at all times, and that it will get out and everyone will know about it, and so will Caleb, and he'll be furious with Jessica because she knows he would have wanted to keep the baby, and then he would break up with her, and then Olivia would have her chance with him. And that's exactly how it worked. So Olivia does her seductress dance act, and she gets Caleb's attention. And they become an item, and they fall in love hard and swift. In the present, Olivia has her friend Jim, who she dated in college, and she's kind of remained, well, you pop into town every now and then, and we go dancing and hang out like buds sort of relationship. And she mentions that Caleb is kind of back in the picture. She doesn't give him all the details, but she mentions it, and it kind of gets Jim all pissy. And so he gets really drunk, and then he's dropping her off at her apartment that night, and he pulls the whole, let's be friends with benefits things, and she's like, no, and he's just like, well, you're a bitch and I'm drunk, so that's just, it's gonna be like that. And he starts groping her and we're just, we're in panic mode here. And then she slaps him and she rushes inside and she calls Caleb because he's the only person she has ever trusted. And so while Olivia was gone, she comes back and her house is trashed and her memory box that she has all of these things from the times that she was with Caleb and all the letters that he had and all these memories and this picture of him. And she knows exactly who did it. It was Leah because before she had come and Leah had come to her apartment because Caleb had broke it off with her so that he could, you know, be with Olivia. It is Leah, no doubt. And Caleb helps her clean up and then she just suggests, let's just go camping because she doesn't want him to go back to his apartment because he knows that Leah's gonna be there and Leah's gonna spill everything about her past with him. She just knows that this relationship that she's built with him right now in the present is like this ticking time bomb. And she just doesn't want it to be over yet and she doesn't know how to tell him. And so they go camping because he saw on this magazine a place that looked familiar to him. It was the place that they have gone camping before. And so in the past tense when they went camping, it was when Caleb asked her again and again if she loved him. And he's just like, I already know you love me. The problem is that you won't say it and you won't trust me enough. And he's just like, if you don't trust me, I can't be with you. And he tries a new tactic because she thinks she can so control her body around him because, as I said before, hasn't even got to second base yet. And he's just like, oh really, you can control yourself. Let's see. And so he teases and teases and he asks her again, who owns you? And she admits, you. So now on the present tense camping trip, Caleb asks, what are we doing? And she kind of avoids the question and he just, they get in the car and it's kind of like this silent tension. And eventually he asks again, what are we doing? And he's trying to get her to talk about her feelings and it's something that she just doesn't do. And so what does she do? He pulls over the car and she runs and he follows her into this orange grove follows her into the orange grove and he pins her against a tree and she returns the question what are we doing and she tries to tell him how wicked of a person she is and how he wouldn't want her if he knew and he's just like stop I don't care what you've done tell me what you feel and he asks her like he used to do you love me and she shouts at him that she does and they have sex with each other for the first time in that orange grove so back at Olivia's apartment and Caleb starts to leave and she calls him back. And she's trying to tell him so many times what she's done and all the lies that she's told, but he keeps stopping her. And she kind of thinks, just let Leah tell him. And he just holds her and they dance to him humming yellow. Like he did before under the tree where they met. I'm a sentimental human being, okay? So that just gets me. And then we kind of get from Caleb's perspective, the whole accident and all of it happening and at first he really didn't know who he was and then he thought how would it be if we just had a clean slate a fresh start and he did it for Olivia and so in the past we find out a lot about Olivia's daddy issues and how they just doomed Caleb from the get-go we learned about the kind of person that her father was and how she just has really big trusting issues and she just doesn't want to depend on somebody. For a year they were exclusively going out and she never even let him get to second base. He was never not okay with that. Of course he wanted more with her but he understood that and he was willing to wait for her. Leah goes to see Olivia and gets her thinking but even weighing Leah's crime against mine still leaves me in a bad place and what about Caleb? He would surely cut Leah off if he knew her part but would that leave him hurt and alone? What type of monster would I be if I let him hurt again? Especially just so I could spy Leah. If I disappeared, he would eventually forget about me. He had once before. And then we skip four years. Four years. So much wasted time. If that is one thing throughout this whole series, I'm just like, so much time is just passing so quickly. And I feel like 
things aren't happening and it's all avoiding and I just want to shake them. And then to back up this leaving thing with their whole first break, if we get to know the details. Olivia walks into Caleb's office seeing what she assumes is him cheating on her. And Olivia says the one thing that she knows will just hurt him because in the past she had never said that she loved him. So what does she do? She tells him that she loves him. And he said, I'll always want you, Olivia. It was never about not wanting you. It was about wanting you too much and you not wanting me back. And she leaves and she refuses to return his phone calls. And then Olivia's idea of revenge is to go out, find a guy at a bar, bring him back to her place and fuck him. She lost her virginity to some random and she wakes up to Caleb coming in the next morning. He sees the condom wrapper on the floor knowing that she just screwed some random and he just falls to his knees and he's upset and he's so sorry but he's just mostly angry and olivia decides at that moment to spill everything she says i took jessica alexander to get the abortion and she said i wanted you so badly that i connived and manipulated to get you i stalked you for months i knew every girl you dated i knew every place you took each one of them i planned it all out but she said i always loved you from the moment you first spoke to me and he apologizes for hurting her and then he says i will love again olivia you will hurt forever what you've done is you are worthless because you make yourself that way you'll remember me every day for the rest of your life because i was the one and you threw me away and then he left and so now we're in the present which is four years later remember and caleb comes to olivia asking her to defend leah the woman he married in trial and his way of convincing her to do so is because then i might forgive you and she said because of this and this part got me it, it got me i'm doing this for the time he pulled over and refused to keep driving until i sang along with achy breaky heart and for all the kisses on his bedroom floor while holding my hands above my head i'm doing this because he still calls me duchess and she said it's not about winning the case for me anymore it's about him and my atonement so cammy and olivia break into caleb's place and she finds all of this shit of Leah's letters to Turner. Turner, the guy that she was engaged to. And she paid him with tickets to the Super Bowl to be with her. And while she was searching through all of their crap, she finds Caleb's library, his little office. And it was just how he said that it would be when he told her all those years ago. And she finds this Trojan horse that his father had given to him and it had the secret compartment and she opens it and she finds their penny. After four years, he kept their penny. Kimmy and Olivia find evidence that Leah is trying to get pregnant to trap Caleb because Olivia is back in town and she feels threatened. And so Olivia follows them to Rome and then on the plane she sits next to this guy Noah and she pretty much tells him everything. And he said, what you're doing, it's the right thing. And he said, going after what you love, despite what you've done, and I won't sugarcoat it, you've done some pretty lousy things, but you did it all because you loved this single human being so much that you couldn't help yourself. There's an honesty to that. And he continued to say, I think that after the first time that you give your heart away, you never get it back. The rest of your life is just you pretending that you still have a heart. And he told her to fight clean, be honest. That's the way you'll win him back. But if you see that he's truly happy, leave him be. And she said, I don't know if I can do that. I'm not sure I'm capable of walking away. And he said, that's because you don't know how to love. She refuted that. And he says, no, I'm saying that you don't love him as much as you love yourself. Noah said, there is more to loving someone than just making yourself happy. You have to want him to be happier than you are. And that whole while, after every new piece of brilliance, I was just like, Noah, you need to stop because I already like you too much and I don't want to like you because, I mean, you're a good guy, but I see where this is going to go and I don't want it to go there. By the end of that, with the advice that you didn't want to hear, I was just like, stop being the morality police, okay? And so at the hotel and Olivia is kind of spying on their window and she says to herself as though she was saying to Caleb, I love you so much and there's so many things that I didn't get to tell you. I was so scared of the way you loved me. And she said how sorry she was for all that she did and she says, please, please don't forget me because the possibility of that hurts more than anything else. And then from behind her, he says, I never forgot you. And then he confesses to her how he never had amnesia. And he said how he just wanted to forget all the hurt that he felt with her. That when he met Leah, it helped the hurt a little bit. And then all of a sudden, he just remembered her so vividly one day and it hurt all over again. And he said that when he reached the emergency room, he kept thinking, if only Olivia were here. And he said how he went everywhere to try to find her, all the places that he knew that she would be. And he said that he didn't tell her because he wanted to go back to the beginning. And then he kisses her and they say goodbye. And then we have this epilogue and she's getting married too. And all I could think was not you too. And she says, and I think this is just the biggest wake up call 
you should have just stopped walking down that aisle because she said that she saw Caleb he was waiting at the altar for me I blinked twice and things come back to how they should be Noah is beaming at me you saw another guy in the place of the man that you're marrying should have been a really big wake-up call darling just my opinion this book gave me lots of feels and I mean I like Noah he seems like a good guy but he knew that her heart was not completely his and yet he still married her I don't know I just feel bad I don't want to campaign against this guy because I think he's a good person but Caleb campaigning I just realized it's probably a big brother term that most of you guys don't understand um basically meaning that I think she's right with Caleb and I don't want to say bad things about Noah because I think he's a good person. I don't know. My, uh, you, I give you a lot of feels in this book. Lots of feels. So drop all your thoughts down there in the comments and I will talk to you guys later next time Bookworms Talk. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys later when I talk about Dirty Red. Bye! I'm going to give you guys a non-summer- a non-summary. Can't wait to live a- Hemi and Oliver, 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 Oliver.